Welcome to the Sales Platoon Podcast, where strategy meets storytelling, right at the crossroads of the battlefield and the business front. We'll bring you tactics, triumphs, and truths from the trenches of sales. Here's your host, John Rankin. Hey, everybody, John Rankin here, coming to you from Sales Platoon, and I'm really excited to get this series started off with a tribute to our founder, Raleigh Wilkins. And today on our show, we have his silent partner and good friend who actually kept Sales Platoon alive, Jim LaFell. And we're just going to talk briefly about how you came to know Raleigh, why you got involved, because you're not a veteran, right? You're, you're okay. But, but you've had a long history of being a successful business person and salesperson. And and really just talk about what it was that you saw in Sales Platoon that caused you um, to, to really get involved in this and then winning past to keep it alive. So uh, why don't you why don't you tell me about how you and Raleigh actually first met and, and a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure, sure. Well, first, John, thank you very much. And, th- and, and uh, it's great to see you, as always, and to chat with you. Um, you know, this subject's interesting because our introduction is rather, was rather interesting. And, and, um, and the reason is, is that uh, on my last day of my last job, in other words, I was retiring, uh, my assistant called me uh, right at the very, <laughs> with, at 5 p.m., I would say, my last day on a Friday. And she said, by the way, you need to uh, speak to uh, this gentleman, Raleigh Wilkins. Um, he, um, he's your kind of guy. And, and what she meant by that is that I appreciate uh, people who um, are passionate, people who are, are, are fierce, um, and uh, at the same time, uh, you know exactly what they want. And they've got it. And, and, and their entire goal is, is really to help others. That doesn't mean there wasn't a profit motivation to this, but yeah. at the end of the day, uh, he really wanted to uh, really share his knowledge and his success. Actually, he had tremendous success himself in sales um, with people. So, you know, I made the phone call, I called him up and realized on the phone uh, that this was somebody that was very unique, very special and fiercely passionate about his mission and himself and what he was doing. Uh, and I, it didn't take me, but probably a week, I bought a ticket to Chicago. I didn't live in Chicago at the time and flew up and met with him and realized um, <clears throat> he had a, his business plan was one aspect of it. And frankly, the business plan, I'll, I'll say it out loud. I've been a business coach, a CEO coach. Um, I have had the opportunity to walk into businesses and pick off f- flaws. Uh, and when I say a flaw, it's not it's not a flaw in the CEO. It's not necessarily a flaw. It's one of those pieces of the puzzle in our life that we just missed. And he didn't really have his, his business plan perfected. But you know what? When you're starting out, um, anybody, and like yourself, John, you're a bootstrapper. You've brought a lot of other companies up yourself. And so you know it's easy to make. And it's nice to have another set of eyes and ears to take a look at some things. For sure. So I sat down with him. But what swept me off my feet, if you will, it's kind of a corny way to put it, but <laughs> was his 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 un, unbelievable presentation style. I mean, this guy, um, you know, I mean, I think it was like probably 20 degrees in Chicago. It was a January or February day. And he shows up in a vest and he's and he and he's really he's really dressed to the hilt, you know, and um, but he's got this this posture. He had this, swagger. Yeah, what's that? He had swagger. Yeah, he did. Exactly. Exactly. He had swagger. He walks in and and uh, it, you know, it was just that. And my, my he was a Marine. My father was a Marine. My father-in-law was a Marine. And so, you know, it's a very identifiable for those of us who have been around the Marines, if you will. <laughs> and so and so, um, in fact, my father's a drill instructor in the wow. Marine. So I also just run. I, I knew it quite well. But anyway, um, he um but that wasn't the end of it. I mean, he combined that with his his magical ability to convert um, a, a a business vision with a mission of helping others and being able to connect. And it was a great, it was a big mission for me to understand the mission of saying, hey, look, Jim, I've got bodies. I want to train them. I want to make money on training them, but not from them because they can't pay it. I want to uh, be able to present these well-trained people to people who um, are looking for, for highly trained, ready to go, boots on the ground, 
B2B salespeople. There's not a lot of career opportunities for someone who wakes up. Um, and I did a lot of recruiting in my life. So the, my last job is recruiting and people, I would get people on the phone, young people right out of college. They said, Jim, I went to college in biochemistry or whatever, because my parents wanted me to be a doctor. I could care less about being a doctor. I just actually loved to, my part-time job was selling cell phones or whatever. And they, and they were number one salesperson. I loved it. You know, so these people, but they don't have a career path. I mean, they went to college. They spent, a th you know, thousands of dollars going to college. And there's no really a school of that nature. And and there are schools for sure. And he was replicating that. But his was more unique than that. He said, Jim, I also want to help people who are transitioning. And he had to really educate me um, real quickly on what it meant to go into the service um, from somebody who's right out of high school or maybe, you know, in their early 20s or whatever that number is, and then spend, you know, 10, maybe 15 years or so. And now they're out and they're, uh, quite many of them were married, had children. Um, and now that, that, that stream of income, if you will, and that, that incredibly inclusive safety net um, is, is, is going to dissolve away. And when he shared to me those experiences and how that is and what a what a blunt force that can feel like. Um, I realized that this was a bigger piece than just teaching people how to sell. I'm just now, teaching people. Now what how year to was this? When, so when... this is back in, uh, this is 2021. So it'd be June. I met him on June 7th, 2021. That's the day that I retired. Okay. So, um, so right away uh, we got together. He had a, he, we, we got together because like I said, I read into him fierce, passionate, helping others, and he had a tremendous sense of humor. He had a, I mean, that guy, yeah, he got sharp. Funny, and, and he had a tremendous level of engagement. So in other words, I don't care. We could walk down the streets of Chicago. He could talk to anybody and everybody, at any, and he could hold a conversation with three people at one time. He had this, this, um, this type of magnetic personality that people would engage him and he created this element of trust really fast that's why he was a great salesperson is because when he looked you in the eye and he spoke and the and his posturing and he was humble but he was also assertive at the same time he was had credibility but at the same time was extremely warm and comfortable about talking a broad range of topics and people really really came to him and um so, you know, as we we work through this, he he brought that to the table, not only for the people that in, invested in his company, like myself, he also brought that to the table for each and every member that came to his classes. And uh, and the, and the biggest piece was he did go out and cultivate companies, big companies that you and I have talked about many of them, the Verizons of the world that he's that he worked with and Adobe and a few of these other sizable tech and, and non-tech yeah. companies that that he worked with and provided um, first class salespeople to. You know, so that's, you know, the, the Raleigh that I know was somebody who inspired those of us to participate in terms, whether it was an investment in the company or for me, it was not only that, it was help. I talked, I was involved with Raleigh every single day. I was involved in the classes. I did, I even did a little bit of the teaching, but it was, I actually joined the classes mainly to watch him and get a sense of how he was able to train these people. Like I said, not only from a mechanical standpoint, but also from a standpoint of, look, this is where you're going. He was blunt about it. I mean, he had this thing called the murder board, which basically is a terrible word, but it was where he'd make at the end of the, at the end of the course, he'd have them make their presentations. And if they did a, while he was in, they were doing their presentation, he'd behave like probably some of the most rude people that you would be selling to. And he was brutal about it. I mean, but, you know, people knew and they allowed him to do that. They trusted him. That was a the thing. They really trusted him, even though it was sometimes pretty harsh. And, but it was re it was reality. I mean, and that was what he wanted to share with them. And um, he was never apologetic. I can tell you that right now. Never. And, and he wouldn't be. I mean, certainly he would apologize if he if he made a gross error or hurt somebody. Sure, sure. Sure. But, but but I mean, but he didn't ever apologize for his message and or the way he delivered it. He never did because he felt like, look, this is the truth. Uh, and, 
if he can't handle it, then then uh, you need to watch the movie, whatever it is. But you know, it's um, so you know he uh, he came from um, a background that I think um, actually a lot of people, and probably a pretty strong handful of people that come that are in the military, come from a background that they would like to change. And uh, and he's no he was no exception. He was a, a foster child. Mm -hmm. He was an alcoholic when he was quite young. I think he had been dry for something like 20 or 25 years, maybe. He mentioned that when, when he came to Fort Campbell that because uh, we went out to O'Charlie's and and when he came down, it was still during Lent. And so he wasn't eating meat. He was doing fish. And he was telling me a little bit about overcoming that and being sober. And so that, you know, I know that that's a, a part of his story. Yeah. Well, I, I think when anybody becomes an alcoholic at a young age, it's a battle for life. Um, and maybe battle is not the right word, but it's something that you have to have care around. You have to care yeah. for yourself to the point that you have to verbalize it. Uh, and maybe not have to is the right word, but you do. You, you, it's I, almost natural that you need to describe. And and uh, there's a great deal of pride, I think, with him in being able to do that. He embraced Christianity. He was a he was a devout Catholic, and I know that that would also uh, help guide him uh, to to success on on those demons also. Um, so, but you know that all gave him this tremendous strength. You know, people who have to battle those demons and whether and it's a never ne ever a never ending battle, that also brings that core strength out that a lot of people. Um, and I've said to people. Well, I think we've all observed it, John. We know people who have lived a cushy life from childhood all the way up, and they got into Harvard because they their <laughs> their parents were a you know right. were an alum. You know what I mean? And they get in yep. and they come, but they don't ever achieve the the passion of success. The people who have had their feet to the fire at some yeah. point in time, yeah. and um, and he had, and and, and the foster care wasn't good for him it was not it was not supportive but he got out you know he turned 17 or 18 somewhere along in there um he put time in he went right into the military and and frankly he even he even admitted to me he said i'm surprised they kept me he said i'm surprised i was able to get in and get going and, you know and then he put his time in there and then that that regimen if you will um really I think it helped him a lot. Uh, it, yeah. it, it it carved a piece out of him that says, now I know who I am. Now he did, Go ahead. remind me, he did, what was it, two tours in Iraq, one in Afghanistan, or was it vice versa? Was it two in Afghanistan and one in Iraq with the Corps? You know, I can't, you know what, I don't remember that, to be honest with that. I'd like to, I'd have to follow up, but what he did put in the time, I know that he was a correspondent. He wasn't uh, necessarily, well, I mean, he was around live fire, but I don't think he actually uh, was um, in battles himself. But he was there, and I know that he uh, he did he did participate at a, at a pretty dramatic level. But I don't remember. I, I have to say, I can't remember those details. Um, I, I you know I focused a lot on you know what he got out, and he worked for Nasdaq. He actually did some selling for them, and he did some selling for other companies. He worked for El Sievers. L. Sievers is a company most people may not have heard of. I, I happen to know about them because they're a medical publishing company. They publish medical journals, and they're they're a huge uh, publishing company. And um, and he was successful. Both of them became VP of Sales, I think, over at Nasdaq. And so he, he when he came out of the military, obviously gave him the strength to go find those positions. He already had the intuitive ability to sell, I believe, right. like a lot of us who are in sales. But um, but the Marines gave him that you know, for lack of a better word, that's fine, but actually really uncovered his ability to get out and be assertive and to show off his true talent. You know, we have our talents and then we have our, you know, what we're good at. And, you know, he, he had talents, but he didn't know he was really good at selling. You know, he had his talent, but he didn't know he was good. The Marines gave him that ability to say, you know, you are good at this. Not that he, not that the Marines teach you to sell, but they teach you about yourself. And I think yeah. that's really, really what it did. Uh, for him, it created a man for out of him for sure, and so, um, and you know, he, he his life was you know certainly complicated and and fraught with with some uh, some difficult areas. But when I met him, it was uh, he was a breath of fresh air, and uh, and he and I were, we talked pretty frank about 
those low times once in a while and he would call me which was great that he found enough honesty in me and enough safety in me to to spend time you know eight or nine o'clock at night uh, with a phone call not not a lot but once in a while and so it was it was good so yeah so uh, you came came on board so when i think about this so the paperwork i got he started sales platoon in 2018 or 2019 right and then obviously 2020 we know what happens there uh, you come on board in early or mid 2021, right? Okay, and then in 2022 is when Fort Campbell asked me to start a skill bridge, and I was like, "No way! I'll go find somebody." And and then I found Sales Platoon online, and he he flew down to Fort Campbell, and and we spent time together here. Um, it's just really kind of interesting the way that that whole thing kind of transpires, right? Um, yeah. How did he get connected with your company for them to tell you on the day you're walking out the door to to call uh, him? Yeah, so I had a, I had the most, you know, when I retired at 69 years old, and I had had a lot of assistants I'd worked with, but oh, I had great this, for 69, by the way. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> it's a lot of work. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I had an assistant, and she was brilliant. She was brilliant, and she was really tuned into to me and and what I was looking for. So she did the pre-screening of everybody that called in, whether it was somebody like Raleigh that wanted to you know, sell us individuals or whether it was, whether it was individual, but she pre-screened all my candidates before I actually did an interview with them. And uh, she was just an incredibly perceptive woman. She, she, uh, she's gone on to recruiting herself and she actually recruits for pilots for United Airlines or one of the, one of oh, the wow. airlines. They got to yeah. poach each other. They got to poach each other to keep there. There's not enough pilots, you know? So, right. but, um, and she may be doing something now, but, but she, and she's, she's the one that when she talked to him for a little while, it just clicked in her head. She said, you know, um, we, we, we might be able to put, put some of your people to work here on one hand, but on the other hand, you should talk to Jim because I know Jim did retire and I, but I also know Jim well enough while he enjoys fishing, he's not going to do it every day. And he's not, and he's not one to just go and say, I'm retired and I'm going to go work in my garden. The rest of it. It's not me. So, so that's why she did it. And, uh, and she, she called me at home. I mean, and, and just said, Jim, you know, give this, give this gentleman a call. It's, this is an interesting contact for you. And she, I've had contacts even since then, but that's, that's how that transpired. Um, and and I uh, I appreciate her for it really I really do yeah, yeah no, that's good assistant right so yeah um cool so talk to me um a little bit about uh, as as sales platoon was uh, getting into late 2021 22 um, that's that's really kind of when some of the issues started coming up and we'll talk about it in a little bit but but what was happening that was that Raleigh was struggling uh, in that area? Well, so as we um, move forward and I learned more and more about what the, the core program, which is the core program is the one you're executing now, basically. So let's, let's, let's find uh, veterans and uh, ones that uh, that can sell or want to take a career in sales, let's train them, transition them, and then let's find them jobs, whatever that takes. And that was his original court uh, group. So, but Raleigh had a much bigger picture than that, and that's really what inspired me in, from a financial standpoint to get involved. I had no idea where my personal level with Raleigh was going to get on this. To be honest with you, which transpires the financial side of this. At the end of the day, the financial side was like, okay. This is something I can support whether I get paid back now or 20 years from now. I didn't make, I, I didn't really care, but I should say I didn't care. Of course I always care, but I should say yeah. it didn't become the primary focus, probably the best oh. thing. But so what happened is, is we had created a, uh, what we would call a PEO, which is basically a professional employment organization or a professional sales organization that we were just beginning to test out that we would take a group of veterans that worked for us in Chicago under our own umbrella. And we had a line of computers and little small offices there in the Willis Tower, which is the ex Sears building. And um, we, would get, we had companies that say, hey, we used to introduce or sell our product for us. 
and uh, and we would just sell on the sales floors. Well, when we looked and ran the numbers on that, um, financially it made more sense. So it was an adjunct and probably was going to become a bigger piece and maybe the sales platoon in itself. But it would also open up this tremendous pipeline for us to say, look, if you want to go to work for these companies, we'll take you, we'll get you set up and introduce you to those companies. On, on the other hand, oh, if you want to stay and do the work for sales platoon, here's the pay that we'll pay you. And, uh, and here's what that looks like and feels like. And here's the companies that uh, hire us on occasion or who knows what's going to be. And you're going to be doing a lot of outbound calling, looking for companies, looking for a sales force, um, which is a lot easier than outbound calling, looking for, I want to sell you something. When you call a company and say, you know what, I've got a built-in, well-trained, ready-to-go sales force. If you've got a new product you want to introduce, do you know who your clients are? We'll find them. We'll go from there. And we had, and he had built in a lot of technology. And you and I have talked a lot about that leftover technology that's out there. He had a tremendous, I mean, so, you know, we, we well, Zoom, uh, I mean, the um, Zoom info, uh, the other databases of all the company, he had all that pulled together. And so that was really where, and my, my portion was funding that piece. And at the same time, going out and finding other funders. Well, Raleigh had some fragility to him for sure. And uh, he actually spent a week in the hospital at the VA in, in uh, Chicago. Uh, I went up to see him. I picked him up probably, I think his best friend who lives there picked him up from the hospital. I went and saw him a couple of days later and, you know, he, he was, I won't say fine, but he was not, he was stressed, but he was, you know, he, he, but he could do the job. I mean, he wasn't, he came right back to work and he, and he, and he started to do the job. I have to laugh because he did say, Jim, you know, I live down the street from where I work and I can't see driving my car this 10 blocks <clears throat> in the snow. So we got himself a bicycle. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, the first day I told him, I said, Raleigh, and I, I said this and I meant this. I said, well, I'm going to buy some insurance on you because for you, where you drive down Michigan Avenue to get to your to get to your office, it, it's not it's not someplace you want to ride a bike, especially in the middle of the winter. I said, yeah. this is you know, sure enough, he gets hit. Now he's not hurt. Nothing happens. He's wearing a helmet. He's a real safety guy. So uh, he calls me up and he shows me a rip in his pants. Or I said, what, what did I tell you? I said, yes. So he stopped doing that. But that's the kind of stuff he did. I mean, he, yeah. he, he did some. He some was, quirky, it's not quirky. just that though, too, because he was real eclectic, right? So he was playing oh. guitar and was doing some stand up comedy, right? He did stand up comedy. He played the guitar. He sang. Yeah. He had, uh, he had a, a, a fiance that was, on and off, but just a delightful human being I got to meet in this process. And she uh, um, and she would tell me the stories and, and how he would court her and how he would, um, these elaborate schemes of, of, um, of show of his affection for her were just, you know, it was overblown and parties he'd put on for her and stuff. It was, and- uh, He was uh, the he, modern day great Gatsby's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, and he did that for everything. I mean, people said that he'd show up you know, I can't remember. Oh, I he saw some people running. He lived on, he lived right off of Lake Michigan. So he, he in the summer, these guys, a group of guys would run. And he said, hey, I want to run with you guys. They said, sure, we'll meet us here tomorrow, whatever. He shows up, they said, in the most wildest outfit that they were like, oh, my God, we don't want to be seen with this guy. You know? <laughs> but he said, well, is this not the right gear? You know, it was just how. But once they got to know him, they realized, hey, you know what? It's it's just quirky. It's just Raleigh, and yeah, and he was, that, he was very, very flamboyant, and um, uh, you know he always wore a vest. He always he had a sport coat and a vest. Always was in a vest. <laughs> yeah, he was always wearing a vest, and and some of those vests got really wild. And he was, but um, it was uh, it was so that's that's what made a lot of this a lot of fun. I mean, it was a I had a lot of fun when I went to Chicago, and we finally got out of the office and we went to dinner and we went around and the people he knew and talked to and, the, and, and, and his flamboyancy is probably a, as a good word. Uh, it was just a blast. And, uh, and, you know, there was no alcohol required. I can tell you that it was just a raw blast being with him. So that was, uh, that was, a that was him without a doubt, yeah. but, you know, to go back to your question, um, you know, so the issues became these, this conflict of building out this, this entity, and it's hard to attract people to come into downtown Chicago if they don't live there. I mean, if they live there, you can find them. But not if a veteran is not located there, right. that's not necessarily. Yeah, there's nothing the really up there except for the Navy post uh, on You're the right. Ground. Exactly. Exactly. So we were actually 
considering moving to uh, Virginia, um, and there were some incentives to do so, the state, and I think the federal government too, but the, for us to uh, to move out that way. The, the state of Illinois had some great support and veteran support programs, and he was already integrated in those. And so those programs would have been hard to leave, although we would have recreated them most likely in Virginia. In fact, I know Virginia had some outstand, has outstanding veteran support programs too. So, but that was a conflict, that was a hard, so we weren't getting that core built out and that was causing him some stress. And then um, the companies that were taking on our people, they, um, it, it felt like it became, how do I word this? Maybe somewhat selfish on their part. You know, their expectations began to change. And, you know, there were some economic um, things happening. I mean, COVID, Right. Yes, we are coming out of COVID, but when you think about early 21, it's still very on. It's still yeah, it, the it's country's still locked down. I mean, there's yeah, there's stuff still happening. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of damage that's been done in the economy and in the psyche of hiring people. That's really what it came down to. The mm -hmm. psyche of hiring was where are we going? Where is the economy? Even today, I mean, that legacy still exists today, as we know. Yeah. And so um, you know, salespeople are always in good salespeople are always in demand. There's no, there's no true slump. I mean, I've I've come through recessions. I, I've never if I was selling, if I was producing, I was never I was no chance of ever being laid off. Did I make less money because the sales were lower? Sure. Because commission job. That's just the way it works. But uh and that's one thing I love about you. You come out of a commission background like I do. So. Yeah, you know, it, it's it, in you learn, you know. I learned a lot. I mean, I, my parents came through the depression. Like I said, my dad was in World War II. So we learned as children that, you know, you save every penny, no matter how much you got, you still save every penny. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you just know how to, you know how to get through those times. And you, you know what you also, I learned as a perspective and Raleigh had this perspective is those times don't last, you know, yeah. tough people last, tough times don't last. And so that's really I think a lot of, uh, you know, so that's a part of a Marine too, right there. You know, this, right. this battle's tough, but it's not going to last, but the toughest of the tough will come through. And so, you know, that was his, and that's what we were working through. We're working through and, um, you know, financial is getting a little stretched at the same time, our support from our core group of hiring people is becoming a little pressure. So that's the pressure that started to befall him. And he took it, harder than I think he should but as, as I've already talked about him I think he, we realized he was emotional he yeah. was uh, dramatic and he was also and so that all contributes to this thing that plays in your head and um you know so you combine that with what demons that he had you know that's that's it, yeah. it, 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 it was it's so funny too because you you meet somebody so magnetic like him like I you know when he came to Fort Campbell, man, it was like the world was on fire and he had the hose. Like he just, yeah. you know, <laughs> and um, uh, I, I remember that, you know, we were sitting in um, here at Fort Campbell, which is right behind me, but we were sitting in the um, uh, this um, place where they do like all these veteran hiring fairs. And I just remember him. I won't mention who he was upset with, but I just remember him going to town fighting for these kids. And he was yeah. so upset. And I, I remember watching him going and I asked him, I was like, hey, what was that about? And he explained it to me. And I was like, well, that makes sense. Like, I'd, I'd be pissed about that, too. And, I, you know, like I said, I didn't get much time with him, actually, uh, to really develop a long relationship. But he was he was he was powerful when he was on and he was just as energetic when he was mad. So, you know, yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I saw that once in a while, I mean, not between he and I, but I saw him, you know, because John, in his mind, if you're in this, if you're into, if you claim to be helping vets get yeah. a job or become trained or to transition or to, whatever it is. And all of a sudden the things you're doing and the way you posture are inconsistent with that mission. He questions it. Yeah. Well, why are you here? Is there some self grandizement around this for you to say, Oh, I help vets. Or is there a right. uh, financial incentive here that you're pocketing 
money just because they're bad? I mean, w- w- right. you know, he sniffs that out. He goes on the attack because he says you're not being true to your mission or to the vets. And you're not right. being true to me. I mean, and he would tell him outright. And he he he, he didn't do it in a um, a perfect way. I mean, he, he, you know, we can all uh, display our frustration or anger sure. or harbor falsehoods without becoming angry about it. But hey, you know what? He yeah. was passionate, and that was a piece of that. So you know, his his vision, which is what bought me in, like you. Like when I saw the website, I was like, cause I love sales. I've been in sales since I was 11, long time commission only guy. I mean, outside of the army, I've really done sales my entire career, my entire life. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I had a couple of non-sales roles, but, but I've had four W2s my whole life. So it struck me when I was going through the website and then I met him cause he was an anti-commission guy. Like he wanted just yeah. BDR roles and, and so when I first met him, the goal was to start getting these kids hired for more than 20, 25 bucks an hour, which is still happening. Um, and then I saw an opportunity there that I could help him a little bit and take the companies that were calling him for commission only stuff. And I could work with them because that's my background. Right. right. And um, um, I just remember us having that conversation he's like yeah you can teach all that shit <laughs> like he did he just didn't want nothing to do with it and uh it was so funny too because he was you know like he never met me i had one conversation with you and him um <laughs> and then he's on a plane to fort campbell yeah you know and i yeah. picked him up from nashville and you know like he he literally if it was about helping the troops he was gone he was oh. there yeah um yeah. And I, I don't know from your perspective, because again, I just met you on that one Zoom call. Did, did he even do any vetting before flying down here or did he just get in the plane and come? I I think, John, that in the amount of time, I'm, actually, you're right. You The three of us were on that Zoom call, right? Yeah. And when you departed from that Zoom call, um, he'd have me on almost all his Zoom calls of that nature. And the only reason, well, I won't say the only, but the biggest reason why I was there when when you depart, he'd say, okay, Jim, you know, is this somebody, uh, do you trust this guy? What do you think? Yeah. And yeah, this is a veteran. This guy, this guy is not, you know, I've, you know, I've looked him up here online while we're talking, blah, blah, blah. I said, no, this guy's authentic. Uh, you should go down and talk to him. It sounds like it'd be a great, a great lead into, into Fort Campbell. And maybe more than that, because, uh, Israel and I were talking is at some point in time, a CEO like Raleigh or even yourself, and uh, is that you can work in the business for a long time, but you have to some point in time. I mean, you're a bootstrapper yourself on a few of these things. So when you look at that bootstrapping, the company has the company's going to mature, and you have to mature with it, which means yeah. now you got to work on the company, not in the company. That's right. And that was my biggest challenge with him is that we need to find someone that's either going to run the company or Raleigh, you're going to run a company and they're going to sell, which means you need to find, uh, I'm sorry, not sell, but train. So we need to find teachers. We did find a teacher. And I, he couldn't- I'm having the same struggle he has. So the value for he and I comes from connecting with these kids and showing them a better way. Yeah. I'm already yeah. there. Yeah, that's but, your heart, John. That's what yeah. you don't want to. You don't want to ever leave that. And, yeah. and, and yeah. he wouldn't have either. Um, no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. And I said, okay, well, let's find a CEO. And I said, well, maybe, maybe somebody like John Rinkin would fit that role. You know, or so that <laughs> was kind I'm of. I'm just a as bad as him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it that has me just as worried. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. But I think that it, 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 in time, though. Maybe there's a compromise in there. And I tried to get him to do this. We hired Christine and Christine was a fabulous teacher, a fabulous person. And she got addicted. She, she, I mean, she said, oh my God, Jim, this is such a great, maybe because in the beginning, she was like, okay, well, I'm going to do this teaching. I'm going to do it this way, blah, 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 blah. And it wasn't about a week later, she calls me. She says, Jim, the, this is different. I said, yes, it is different. <laughs> these yeah, are people, really these, so there's a group of people that came from somewhere. They didn't come out of college or high school and they're green and they're it's no, these are, this is a whole different ball game. And she was like, wow, these people are like me. They have children, they have, you know, broken families and, yeah. but at the, or they have whole families or they have this. She just thought that it was, so 
we all got that way. It, it was, it was, um, it's, uh, it was a hard thing and I understand it. I get it. And, and I, um, I could, I could have easily, it was hard for me to, when I took the whole class for the whole three months. Now those young men and women went on to their, to into, into their careers after that, but I didn't go to the second class, but I did miss it for the same reason is that it's a lot of fun to watch and interact with these people yeah. and to grow with them. I learned a lot from them. I learned a huge amount f about their life. I knew nothing about the military or, or you know, or I, the nuances of being in the military. Sure. I had clue. Or the transition. Right, exactly. You know, and Paris Island is, you know, one direction, three or four miles and the other direction is the Marine Air Corps base. So I, I definitely have a lot of exposure to it. And I, uh, I, have, to, I have to admit, John, I forgot to tell you this, I spent, probably three hours over it. There's a museum on the, uh, on Paris Island. It's one of the best historical museums about South Carolina I have ever been to. I mean, it, it, it covers not just the military, but it covers all the aspects of the, of, of the military and the Marines, but it, um, but it certainly has this, it's just a great, so if you ever come this way, you need to come out this way. I'll take you over there, but okay. um, it got off track there a little bit. Um, but Raleigh, you know, Kind of got off. I kind of forgot where we were headed. I got off track. That's all right. That's why you do these things, man. Because yeah. that's where the magic happens. Yeah, they, they, no. Oh, we were talking about being. We talked about being really heartfelt. Yeah. Into helping these individuals, and that's that is that's the toughest thing, as you mentioned for yourself as well as Raleigh. So how you know maybe that's a conversation right there. Maybe maybe it is a podcast. Maybe we invite somebody to give us some help. How do we help transition you? Or how, if you want to teach, how do we funk? How do we get someone that functions the company? You know, it's, it's, it's these well, conversations. You have to Southwestern. The, where are they in the conversation? You yeah, know? the truth is, is the, and I had to do this this cohort because it's getting too busy. Is I had to bring in a second teacher uh, to take part of the load, and then I'm looking at by April that two out of every month I'm not teaching on that Monday. I'm working with the companies. That allows me to still connect with the kids and build and relationship with the kids and to do what I love to do, but it's also slowly freeing me up to actually run the company part of this. And, right. uh, you know, the way I structured it, which was slightly different than the way Riley structured it, I, I spend less time on the tools, more time on the, the, the practum of selling, right? And then make right. them go sell. Um, but I also took us off zoom so much so that and, and did some more self-paced certification stuff that they could really you know they could really sink their teeth into that would help their career over the course of the next 5 10 20 years or whatever right, right. um and even that was hard like to to release that and and I think ultimately when you have uh, you know I joked with you when we first started really connecting and talking and you helping me put this thing back together after his death um, was, I, I would joke, it's not my ugly baby, so I don't really care. But I found that as the year went on, it became my ugly baby. You know? <laughs> like, and it isn't so ugly either. Yeah, yeah, right? You know, well, I mean, the inner joke between you and I was, everybody thinks their kid's the best looking kid in the world. And so, right. and Raleigh thought this about sales platoon. And, you know, when I came in, I didn't have any of that, that prejudice because, I yeah. was not really involved, right? Right. And so then just as the year has gone on and I've connected with these kids and learned their stories. And you know, so in the last cohort, we had a we had a young guy. Well, I say young, he was in his uh late 30s, fully retired. And he had a uh, a day where we were challenging them on what do you want out of your life? Like how much do you need to make and what's your vision for your future like, right? And uh, he texted me later that day and he goes, you really challenged me today. Like I've been skating uh, because I make plenty of money and uh, I haven't really pursued my potential. Two days later, he had a $24,000 commission day. That's what he made. <laughs> that good for him. I mean, That's good. You know, yeah. so you start hearing those stories and, and you can't help but to, to adopt that baby. It doesn't matter what it looks like and it becomes yours. You know, so I, I faced some of those same struggles. I think um, uh, I think I have a little bit of a different perspective because I didn't create it, though. Right. So. Um, well, but, you know, John, don't sell yourself short because 
you have made it your own. And frankly, one of the reasons why um, I've been probably, well, obviously more hands off with you at this point, up to this point anyway, based on the fact that you, there's no way I could describe where it should go to you. You had to take what was there and make it fit where you were going to be successful. Yeah. Each one of us would have executed differently on the pieces of the puzzle that we got. How do we put them together, back together, or maybe we just throw the puzzle away, we start over, however you did it. So yeah, that, that was actually it, really difficult, you know, because um, yeah. so first Raleigh um, had everything fragmented, which mm -hmm. when I look back at it, I, I think he, I think he, like many veterans, had some uh, some security concerns that you know, made it yeah. to where he was storing information on multiple platforms. Right? Yes, yes. And, yes. Um, you know, and so when we recreated this, you know, you and I spent a lot of time on the phone and, and you know, so there were not. like, I'm like, I'm good at tech, but I'm not tech heavy like he is. I struggle with CRMs and, you know, I, I still do stuff on notebooks and paper. And you know, so, I mean, and uh, whereas he really was dug into that. So, you know, as I looked at what's the end state, you know, getting these kids hired for more than 20, 25 bucks an hour. It doesn't matter how good you are at a CRM, that's not going to get you hired. Right. That's Flat exactly. It's not going to get you hired or any of these other really, really awesome tools. Right. And, um, you know, uh, you know, when we look at what he started and, and you said this to me, well, I don't know, maybe six months ago. He said, at the end of the day, we're still doing what he wanted. It might not look the same because I'm not him, right? Um, I'm definitely no, I'm definitely be. older and fatter. Um, you know, so, but, I don't, you know, Raleigh was pretty young. He was only 48 years old, 49 yeah, years old. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm just a little bit older than him. Not by much. Okay. Three, okay. Three, three years. Um, yeah, okay. um, yeah. You know, but really saving the passion of why he started this and what he was really after has been important to both of us, I think. And, um, you know, I, I think it's a good place to kind of transition. So, you know, here we are. It's I met him in May with you and him, May of 22. Right. He comes down the first week of uh, the first week of um, of June spends a week with me at Fort Campbell. We put together a plan. He invites me. I come and I teach twice. Um, then he's graduating. We're going to, then in September, he and I were starting to talk about dividing up the labor. So it was going to be me, him, and Christina doing trainings. Um, and then in July, he ends up taking his life. And for me, uh, like I was sharing with you before we came on the call, that was a really uh, hard gut punch for me. I didn't know him well, but he he ended up taking his life on a Friday. And on Sunday, one of my very good friends, I married her and her husband, uh, and her husband's still a great friend of mine. She ended up committing suicide, shooting herself. Um, and so I had those back to back. I found out about her first. And then Christine uh, messaged me, did you hear what happened? I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, and, you know, there's so many of our, our veteran community that struggles with this, that I don't know what the numbers are today, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 2022 a day. Uh, end up yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big number. There's no, and I didn't know it until I got involved in this. Um, and I should know that number too, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it, 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 it is far and uh, far greater than the average. And, and there's an uptick in suicide in, in the U.S. and maybe around the world, but certainly in the U.S. anyway. But veterans historically have had this 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 issue. Uh, yeah. And I would speculate uh, combat veterans probably is even higher. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think there'd be any. So. Yeah, you know what happened between the time I, I think your question or your your thought was what 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 really transpired between those six weeks in there or seven weeks whatever it was. I, I don't even know that we that we know because like you and I have talked about that you didn't even really know like no um, everybody was kind of really taken taken aback by it um, you know 
Um, we knew that there were some struggles and the pressure, like you were sharing, was on about the finances and stuff like that. And I don't even know that we need to, to know why. It's just that here's a guy that was successful, created his own company, was doing really great things in the world and already accomplished so much in his life. But here you were in his life as one of his you know, mentors slash partners, and you didn't know. Uh, I, yeah, I wasn't you know, close enough to him to know. And, you, you know, there's probably I other can, people out there that stay silent like he did. Yeah, you know, and I could say I didn't know, but I have to say this. I I did have a level of concern about it. I mean, I I actually did entertain the thought of buying some insurance on him because if the company's running and this did happen, uh, it, the money wasn't for me. It would have been to keep the company running. Now we were able to do that, but you and I both know it took it did this before you got it back to this. So, um, and I don't know if that would have happened. And one of his employees, um, Lonnie. Uh, I got the call. I called Lonnie right up, and Lonnie's first question to me was, "Did Raleigh, did Raleigh commit suicide?" This is when I he yeah. said, "Why, why is my phone blowing up, Jim? Why are you so desperately trying to get a hold of me? Did Raleigh commit suicide?" And um, so, um, when one's mind becomes uh, tortured, uh, the, it, be, it there's an acceleration in 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 some expressions that you. You do become uh, aware of. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Now, could I have ever interpreted that that there's something eminent? I'm not trained, and I well, that's a bad excuse. I should have said, "Holy shit, there's something here." And but he had some closer people than me that lived right there that saw him every day. Include now his his fiance. She actually told me. She said, "You know, Jim, we, we actually had broke it off," and um. um you know, he had bought a very expensive ring and he was on the hook for that. I didn't know that until after the fact. So in other words, she she shared this, the, these additional financial burdens that he put on himself. Um, and we talked about flamboyancy. It, it was it was extravagant. We'll put it that way. And so more than he could afford at the time. So, you know, she 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 was crushed, by the way, because she always saw even to this yeah. day, she still says to me. I, you know what? I, we were going to get married. I knew I was going to marry Raleigh Wilkins. There was no doubt in her mind. She said, okay, so we broke it off. So what? But that was not going to be the end of the story for her and, or for them. She was convinced. And she said to, to me, she said, she knew, she knew. She said he called her one day and they sat somewhere and talked for four hours. And then he went home and he did this thing. So she knew at some point that something was, she didn't realize it was that eminent but she knew too. And both of us kick ourselves uh, uh, and that we were close enough and didn't do something about it. And, um, you know, so that's, that's, you know, what can I say? I mean, it, it's, um, I, I've, I've well, tried about it. I've, there's I've there's a couple forward. of things there, you know, um, first is, is that people shouldn't suffer in silence and leave clues like get yeah. help. Like, you know, for the people that are going to listen to this and they're going to want to hear Raleigh's story and, the, you know, how all this kind of transpired, because I believe that that's going to happen. I believe people are going to want to know this story. Um, I would say, don't, don't be Raleigh, speak up and actually trust your friends to tell them what's happening. doesn't matter yeah. if it's financial or emotional or combat related or whatever it is. Don't, don't be the next Raleigh, right? Yeah. Like, you know, and then for you and her, yeah, there might've been some clues, but you can't hang on to that, right? Like, um, uh, you know, unless he like flat out told you and then you didn't act. Um, yeah. Because, you know. And that would have been, yeah. And I, 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 I true, that, that's a good point, John, but I also think that the rest of us also need to be able to be, a little more sensitized, especially those people who are at risk, which yeah. is veterans, who yeah. which is combat veterans, which is which are people who come from backgrounds like his. I mean, he shared his background very openly with him. So, sure. Sure. and so, I those kinds of things added up in my mind. But like you just said, 
I couldn't have predicted the moment, I, and I'm not sure I could have done anything about it anyway. Right. But that's not, I don't want to be a cop out around that either. Um, <clears throat> so it, 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 they're all of us. I mean, it's a yeah. conversation. But but the lesson here is is it's twofold. If you're if you're listening to this and you're in that place, speak yeah. up. And then for those that are listening that aren't in that place, be in tune to what your friends and family are saying, so that if something strikes you as off, that you actually say something. Hey, are you yeah. okay? Like, yeah. where are we at here? Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Where, where's your? Yeah. Where's your brain? Where's your? Yeah. And you know, and and I want to. You know, th this podcast, this is the first one that we're doing. And I wanted to do it this way to memorialize what, what has happened and to tell people the story of how I came to be here, but to honor the legacy of what he built. Uh, because I wouldn't be here if he hadn't built this. Because when Fort Campbell called me, bro, I was like, I am not interested in 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 building that. I've, like I knew that that was going to be a red tape struggle, which I know he dealt with because he told me about it. Um, and it took him forever to get it up and going. And and so that struggle at where I was at in my life, I did not want to tackle. And, you know, I really, and I've shared this with you privately is, you know, I look at what he's done and, and what he accomplished and it set the stage for us to be where we're at today. It's unfortunate that he's not here to see it, but um, you know, there's so many things that can come out of this now. Um, uh, and hopefully, I, and I tell every class this now, you know, I, I tell them that, you know, he committed suicide and every one of you have my cell phone. And if you don't call me when things are bad and you don't tell me, I will find you in heaven or hell, wherever you end up and kill you again. Like, like nobody should go through this by themselves. Yeah. Um, and I would be really upset if any of them didn't, they didn't call me. Hopefully I'm building a relationship that they do call. Um, and so if you're listening, you know, don't, don't hide that. Call your friends, call your family, let them know because it's not worth it in the end. So there's nothing you can't overcome. And there's a lot of, right. there's a lot of resources. There's a lot of sensitive resources out there. Yeah. Yeah. To, to get, let's let's to switch up here and kind of wrap this up uh i told you we were going to do 15 or 20 minutes but it's been really great yeah. and we're now at an hour <laughs> you can edit it down. <laughs> yeah no i'm not going to edit it down uh, <laughs> um it's been great so so he ends up committing suicide i call you shortly after i give you a couple of weeks and i'm like hey what can i do to help you talk to me about from your angle carrying this trying to figure out how to keep it alive what was going through your mind at the time and how did we get to where we're at today where you and his sister gave me the company? Well, um, you know, so we had some employees and they had to go find positions right away. So they, they, they were unable to uh, try to sort this out. Yeah, they they just needed they had families so they needed to do their thing and and one of them was right in the middle of a cross country move I think so so his sister was really is his well uh, his only um, living relative uh, he'd lost both of his parents quite young so <clears throat> that that's all he had was just so she she uh, got a hold of me right away and said Jim you know can you give me some help here and, I, and sure absolutely and um, She's a, a a real fine human being, just a delightful person. I'm, I, I'm honored and I'm so thrilled that, that I got to get to know her and, and Raleigh's fiance too. But yep. Elizabeth brought a lot of strength to look, Jim, I, I'll take care of the personal side of this. And this is not easy. I'm flying to Chicago and I'm going to, you know, uh, take care of all this stuff that's been left. But the company side, the the sales platoon side, what can you do um, to help transition it, keep it alive? I really want to keep Raleigh's legacy alive, so which mean, which translated in keeping sales platoon alive, at least in my head, and, and hers too at the end of the day. And and, um, and I did have some offerings. I think, John, I, you know, I've, I've been open. I had people who came to me and said, hey, they, they were willing to put some actual money on the table to have the franchise of sales platoon but then i met with these people in fact uh, two of them were in chicago and i because they knew him and um 
when I met with him, nice guys. I mean, very nice people. One of them was a vet. One of them was not. One of them ran a very successful trade sales training organization, and um, and then the other one ran a a financial, a personal fi- a, a corporate financial. He was a he was a he was a wealth management. Basically, is what he was for corporations and individuals. And so, why would he be interested? And he was the vet, and um, he really wanted. When I got in and really peeled back the onion on why do you want to do this, and really, what's this all about for you? And and it was more about. I it came clear to me that he was more interested in meeting with the big companies that Raleigh created a relationship with, so he could expand his business. And he might find a way to uh, to pursue the training side, but it was it was too self serving for me. It wasn't it wasn't a Raleigh spirit. And yeah. so the other person was interested <clears throat> in creating a way uh, that he would be able to benefit because he charged for his training, and then he also did the recruiting side too, which is great. And he could have probably taken this and put it into his company, but it would have been a small, such a small piece. I felt like it wouldn't get the attention and him not being a vet. Uh, I don't feel like it was going to have, again, the same attention that that you give it or that someone else would give. So, um, and then there was, you know, there was a corporate partner that stepped up um, and I, I, I couldn't quite understand why this corporation really wanted it. I actually yeah. couldn't pin that down, but it felt, it didn't feel right to me. So, and I do a lot of things. I either go in and find, do a lot of discovery, a lot of tough questions, put those pieces together, a little research, or I act on my gut. And that last piece, that corporate piece, I mean, it felt good to me. I said, well, you know what? Elizabeth could take some cash out of this. And, right. uh, and at the same time, this was a veteran that worked for this big corporation, but the big corporation at the end of the day, in my mind, really didn't, it, they could have, they could have dumped it in 20 minutes later, would have never missed it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like it was a real secure place to go. So, and then you and I, and then I was thinking, I, you called me, I mean, you called yeah. me and said, what, what are you doing? What's going to happen here? And I'm quite thankful you did because, um, and I think maybe you even called me before I did some of this um, due diligence on the other yeah. three players, or at least two out of the three. And uh, came back and talked to Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, there's nothing here. I mean, there's nothing that you're going to really gain. I mean, let's put it this way, Elizabeth. I can, I can sell this and, and convert this to some cash for you, but not going to be that much. Number one, and she, she doesn't live uh, in an extraordinary or affluent fashion. But money is not her thing. It's not at all. I mean, it's, she's just like Raleigh. It was all from her heart. I mean, she didn't. She raises her children. Her daughter. Um, and so wasn't really who was really more interested in Raleigh's vision going forward, which was really cool for me because I was like, wow, how great is this? Because how much easier is it, John, for me to go share, find someone that shares the same passion? It's easy to find someone to throw you a few dollars, but it, you know, it's no fun in that. You know, I mean, you know, I'm an investor and I invest in in ideas that'll translate into money, right? But that's a that's an arm's length cold hearted, you know, whatever it is. And, but when you're talking about training people and training veterans and human beings and getting involved with that, I wasn't up for just taking this out, taking it out in a cash value exchange. It just becomes a transaction and I wouldn't feel good about it. So you showed up and, you know, you were very humble and said, Jim, I don't know what, I don't know what I could do, but I'd really like to figure out if I could help. I said, well, why don't you take and run with it? Uh, and I know at the time, Elizabeth already told me, find the place and I don't need anything out of it. And, uh, and, and I was, you know, I'm in this, that was my mission. I've always told you that my piece of the puzzle is, 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 is hey, if I got any of it back, that's great. So I do have motivation around that. There's no doubt. Sure. And, if she, in fact, and in fact, if I could deliver something back to her, that's gravy though. That's totally after you and I have, after you and this mission has fulfilled its its core elements of, of what well, we know we're getting these veterans in and we're finding them jobs and they're being successful at it. That's that. And that that, you know, and I and I know you're there. You've you've already proven it. You've done it in less than a year. You transitioned this thing from something that could have been just a smoke. It could have just disappeared without any without any sense at all. 
And you actually took that smoke, if you will, and, and you brought it back, back together and um, you picked it up and ran with it. And, and you picked up the most rewarding pieces, which is the training and, the, and finding jobs for these people and giving them a sense of, of, of self about, I can do this job. Those are the key elements that you brought to the party and you deliver and you continue to, to deliver. And that's, that's really how this has come together. And um, so uh, I thank you. Elizabeth thanks you for sure. Raleigh is not here, but he thanks you. And um, I, uh, I, I I can't tell you how I appreciate it. I really do. And I, I, I think there's a long way to go uh, yeah. to make it where we are. And the only thing standing in our way is, is you because you want to keep teaching. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a way to take that go. Wow. That's right. <laughs> You know, I, I just remember, I, I remember our first meeting and you were so quiet. And I, I remember I was like, what is this guy's role? You know, <laughs> and then um, um, and then we talked again. I, I think it was while he was at Fort Campbell, he called you and the three of us were talking. And then, you know, I, I had no clue what was going to happen. When I made that first call to you, it was genuinely like, hey, bro, what do you need? Like, yeah. You know, and then the second call was on from my perspective, the second call was really about what are you going to do? I know we're not going to do September because that's there's no way. But right. what are we going to do? And that's when you said, I'm, I'm thinking about selling and not. I just took a gamble. I had no clue. I was like, well, shit, I'll throw my name in the hat. Like, <laughs> just see what happens. Yeah. And um, and here we are now a, yeah. a year later. Yeah. Uh, well, a year and a half later. And man, it, it's, it has been so fulfilling for me to meet these kids, to train these kids in what you and I both love sales yeah, and that they're yeah. not getting, cause I called Raleigh from one comment from Fort Campbell. This is what started this whole thing. Guys are getting out of the army and they're getting paid 20, 25 bucks an hour. And I was like, get the hell out of here. There's no way. He's right like 20 years of war and this is what we're getting offered there's no mm -hmm. way and i was like every one of them can go do sales and even not be a great salesman like you and make fifty thousand dollars fifty five thousand right. dollars like there's like you know um and i i you know and that that's what led to that call to raleigh was was literally they said that one thing and it changed the course of my life right. um and and then you being the person you are, and you've given me so much help over the, the last year and a half to to figure out how, how to rescue this and how to put it back on track. And, you know, I'm, we're not, you know, you have that experience. I don't running bigger companies. A bigger company is already a well-oiled machine. And if the CEO passes, yeah, you know, we'll just go and hire a new CEO. Well, having, having, you know, having that succession plan in place is, is something a bigger company is going to afford to do. Are they, you yeah. know, they're going to have people in the line. And yeah. um, so, you know, I, I want to make one little, little call out and that is during the transition for both of us was, was Christine Miller and Christine having taken that last cohort and saw yeah. them through yeah. their employment so that you and I could kind of concentrate, what do we do with the next class? When does it start? And you concentrated more on it than I did, but the fact that you got that organized, I, I do appreciate that she hung in there without pay. I mean, she yeah, without pay. Yeah. No, she made uh, huge sacrifices. Yeah. Huge sacrifices. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to have her on too. We're going to do a podcast with her. So. Yeah. I, she's great. I mean, she's, yeah. She's a, yeah. So, so very yeah. good. Good, man. Well, I appreciate your time and coming on and sharing his story. And um, we're going to put uh, his obituary in the, the show notes and a link to where this is going to be. And then it's going to be hosted on the website as well. Um, man, it's just so good for everybody to hear the story from both our perspectives and how this went and to get to know him a little bit better. So thank you for your time. Yeah, well, you're quite welcome, John. I wish you and, and your family a uh, Merry Christmas and, um, you know, anytime. And, uh, and this actually spurred some, this is great stuff because it spurred some things that I want to share back with you. I'm going to, so I'll put my thoughts down and get them together. Yeah. And, and, you know, you always learn and your brain fires up when you get in these conversations. So again, yeah. thank you again. And I'll say goodbye. All right. Thanks, man. We'll talk soon. Take care. Bye.
Follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Sales Platoon for more updates and veteran success stories. Join us next time as we continue to decode the art of selling through the unique perspectives of those who served.